time, and I needed something that I thought would be uh, supportive and nurturing, and that's what I found with the Toastmasters Club I joined in Oakland. And that's what I think you'll find with a lot of Toastmasters Clubs around the world. Supportive, helpful people who just want to help each other be better. Who's next? Yes, ma'am. How do I come up with ideas for my speeches? <laughs> uh, sometimes in the craziest of ways. Sometimes I'll just be in the shower, right? <laughs> have this shampoo and, and then a word will pop into my head or a phrase or something and then, oh, and then I'll just start coming up with a speech in the shower. And then I'll freak out because I have no way to record it. <laughs> so I'll have to drive real quick and grab my phone and speak a recording. Uh, sometimes it's in conversations with people. Sometimes it's watching a commercial on TV and it's, oh, and then I look for the juxtaposition. So here's that idea. What's the opposite of that idea, All right? Or how are those two things uh, related? I gave a speech uh, a couple of weeks ago at my Toastmasters Club. How many of you have been to the doctor and you had a shot? Right? So right before they give you the shot, what do they say? Hey, you're gonna hurt. They might say that, but they but they usually say you're going to feel a pinch. little pinch. <laughs> So I gave a speech about the little pinch, and I talked about the little pinch that we often encounter in life when we try to do new things. Whether it's a new relationship, or a new job, or, or, or tackling that big thing that you've always wanted to do. You might feel a little pinch. Feel the pinch and do it anyway. So that's how I come up with this thing. There was a question back here. Yes, ma'am. Can I shake your hand? You oh, sure so sweet. Aww. Thank you so much. What's your name? It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. She's cool. Yes. <laughs> I know the first answer is more about speaking, but it's also about leadership. Yes. So, how have you evolved as a leader? How have I evolved as a leader? Uh, show up, volunteer for things, uh, volunteer for officer positions, VP of PR, or President, <laughs> public relations, secretary, secretary uh, sergeant at arms, treasurer, volunteer for something. Get in. Go to the TLIs, the Toastmaster Leadership Institutes, right? Uh, network with other Toastmasters. Uh, if you're further along in the game, sign up for a, an HPL, a High Performance Leadership Project, where you're actually doing something in the community and getting Toastmasters credit for that. Bottom line, get involved. But how does it help me? <laughs> it's, it's, so it's helped me feel the little pinch of dealing with some interesting <laughs> personalities, uh, sometimes competing agendas, uh, but finding creative ways to, to work through all of that. Not just go, oh, this is difficult, let's run away. It's difficult and how do we create a win-win solution from this? So that's what I've taken away. Yes, sir. So I forgot the name of the motivational speaker who might Yeah, so he heard from a motivational speaker that you have to reach a psychological low before you can reach a, a high. I gave a speech at a leadership breakfast in Sacramento uh, about three years ago, and I talked about how I was experiencing some difficulties in my life in 2014. And then I mentioned, you thought, I thought that was bad, then 2015 showed up. <laughs> Getting a divorce, my dad died, a good friend from church died on the day of my father's funeral, my mother fell and broke both of her legs. I was having a circus, right? So what did I do? How did I cope with those things? That was my psychological love. I wrote speeches about them. <laughs> and I gave them here. And so, pardon? In other words, you agree. I don't know if, if, if it's the only way, but I think it certainly is a way, and that has been a way for me, is to take whatever the pain was in my life and talk about that. There may not be an answer in that, but there's something powerful in the sharing. 
someone once said, pain shared is pain had. How much time? One more minute, yes sir. Great question, love the question. How do you avoid getting nervous when you're speaking to people? I stop caring about me. <laughs> what I think I've learned over the years is that if I'm worrying about how I look, oh, there's my tie straight, there's my spread, this thing like, you know, how does my voice sound? If I'm focused on me, I can get nervous because anything could make me look bad and then I feel bad about myself. But when I come to speak, I don't care about me, I care about you. I care about everybody in the audience. And if I'm connecting with you and I'm getting a point across, I, I come to serve. And as long as my focus is out there and not here, then there are no nerves because I'm on a mission. One more quick question. Who's got it? Can you give a message to our graduates? Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> this is great training for so many other things for the rest of your life. Being able to speak well at a job interview or to talk to people to pitch your idea, right? Whatever career you want to focus on, speaking well, communicating well, being a good leader, that's going to be a part of life. It's a life skill. Keep doing this. Thank you all so much for your time.